Xavier Fox show is gonna be on the red carpet doing her Xavier Fox red carpet thing. Hey, everybody. to get on this next one which is gonna be another doozy <laughs> and this one is Lakeisha's what is your definition of submission ladies and is this an obsolete concept mm -hmm. Ooh. why you pick that I don't I picked it because I don't know <laughs> <laughs> of me wanting to answer that particular question was because of the example that I shared with you ladies earlier. Like I said, my parents won't be married, it'll be 43 years in January. So I, growing up, I've seen how my mother submits to my father. So, and again, it's the nuances that as a, as a teenager, you know, going against the grain, I used to be like, what, is she tripping? So for instance, um, having to ask my father if things could occur at the house. Um, asking my father if she could buy something super big, like like drapes or something to that effect. And I'm thinking, you work every day, you got money in the bank, just go buy it. You know what I'm saying? But so for her to tell me, no, I need to ask your father to see if it's okay and see what he thinks. I couldn't grasp, grasp that concept growing up as a teenager. Once I even in my even in my my twenties, I couldn't I couldn't grasp it. Now that I'm a grown ass woman and I understand, and because I mean because I I just look at the relationship in a totally different light now because I want to have that. It's like okay, I get it. However, the key that I see with my parents is that my father is a strong man who covets his wife and who protects her, who who cares for her, who takes care of her. So seeing that dynamic, I understand why my mother submits to him. So given that what my definition is, it would be submission would be some a woman and for a married couple, mm -hmm. I should say that. A woman who caters to her man in the sense that she respects him, she understands what he wants, she she treats him as the head of the household because that's the spot that he's deserving of. Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna marry a man, then we already should have in our head, he's deserving to be the head of, of, of this household because first is God, uh -huh. then your husband, then everything okay. else after. Yeah. So with that, I will happily submit to my, to my husband and say, you know what, can I do this? Is it okay with you if I go out tonight or whatever? Because if he's and, and again I don't look at it as a way of oh he trying to own me and tell me what to do because when you get that in your mindset then you're not ready to be a wife That's to right. me you know what I'm saying but that man got to be understand enough to say he, he trusts me and he understands me and he cares about me enough to know that I got to have my life too so right. baby it's okay you know you want to go get that new dress gone here do your thing but well, what you said that is a very important is <laughs> he has to submit to God First, one. so if he's able to submit to God first, and I respect and know that I should follow him, I'm submitting. Yeah, all that. So, actually, but until then, <laughs> <laughs> I got things to do. If anybody know me, it's not happening. So I'm so. double advocate again over here because okay. the Bible don't say that you submit to your husband because he submits to God. It doesn't say that the Bible says submit unto your husband. So if you married him and he's the head of your household, whether he goes to church and believes in God or whatever, whether he doing what he's supposed to do, we have to stay in our role as being a submissive wife. Yeah. And so that's where the, where the tough <laughs> but the toughness is. But I agree with you. And that's why I'm selecting a man <laughs> that submits to God. And if he does it, exactly. he will not be selected. That way I don't have to submit. submit to that. your husband. It's twofold in that. But it doesn't say, it doesn't say that the husband has to love the wife. Right. As he loved the church. Okay, right. now we get so that. doesn't say, only submit if he loves you, only submit if he's doing what he's supposed to do. That's not what it says. It, it says, says submit unto your husband. It says, it says, why? why submit to your husbands as he, he submits to, to the Lord, but. It don't say but. <laughs> no, no, no. It don't say but. <laughs> That's in that is in 
the word. that's his role. He has to stay in his role. But see, what, right. what we have to understand is we have to stay in our role regardless if he stays in his. She's saying it's not but about your selection. But your selection has to come under God first. Yes. So if you don't select somebody that's submitting to God, then that's your yes. fault that you submit to someone who mm -hmm. that's not some to nonsense. It's right. either, and yes. that's your fault. So you're right. Decisions. So you messed up already, already because you selected the wrong person because you didn't go. Right. You know I just so. want to go all the way back to that one word that she said, which is my favorite word, deserving. He has to be deserving of my submission. And a he part of that is in loving, not the emotional yeah. love, but the verb love. He loves me by taking care of me, by respecting me, by being, uh, you know, being in a fidelity relationship. So, and once he does all of that, then I don't, for me, because I'm not trying to be in a relationship or get married, but if I were, I would not have a problem submitting or compromising or doing all the wifely things that I'm supposed to do as long as he's deserving and he needs to be deserving all the time. But she brings up, up a valid point. The problem comes in when you select a man of God who's serving God, but then after you get married, he decides he's going to go left. You still you have to be, have to be submissive uh, to him. You have to be equally yoked. No, no, no. But, but, but you're not listening. You're not listening. I said when you got married, you was equally yoked. We was all going to church on Sunday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. We all was going there. But then you decided after we got married, you want to stay in the club. I was I was replying to her when she oh. said you still got to be. You, you still have to be submitive. Oh, yes, you do. Yeah, yes, you okay. do. I need you guys to you married to an imperfect person. That's right. And so they're gonna fall short. Yes, but that doesn't mean you fall short. And But there will be times when you fall short. So when God is loving on you, when you are ugly and sinful and he can see your stank, stank, stank. Yeah, 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 what, yeah. what if it's yes. miserable? And so you have to do that. You you the Bible says, you I'm going to submit to his will. Well, then you will be there. Listen, and that's on you. Yeah. But the <laughs> point is, the Bible says submit. But yeah. I'm not a Christian, so all of that is moved to me. So. Oh, well, then, yeah, that's another thing. I'm talking about the <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking the same thing about what you just said. I mean, because we all probably could possibly have different religions, and it's really important that we stay focused on, if you're saying submit, go just on based on you and a relationship. Thank you. We're talking about relationships <laughs> and how you feel about submission. You know, religion, I'm not in into religion per se. I'm more of a spiritual person. And so in every religion though, there is a, a, a submissive part for the woman. That's true. Whatever. Buddhist or I don't care where you go. Catholic. A woman got to submit. Yeah. Okay, what religion you go to? The woman got to submit. The woman got to submit. The spirituality of it. Me personally, I... Um, you know, in all the years that I've been married, I've been submissive my entire life. I started being submissive with my brother, so I, I already was in the submissive role. Yeah. Um, and so being in a relationship my entire life, this is the first time in my entire life of being, like, so-called single. And it's because, one of the reasons is because I just want to get to know myself and be submissive to me. Like, because I know that... If I get in a relationship, I know I'm already I'm going to cater to you and I'm going to take care of you and it's going to be about us and you know, me making sure that you're happy. Mm -hmm. I'm just at a point right now I want to make sure that I'm happy. I want to submit to myself and see what is it that you like. What learn about myself and that's just kind of where I am at. I like right that now. because when we get married, being submissive does not mean only taking care of your husband. Absolutely. Let me let me say that. Please be clear. Real. Please be clear. I'm sorry. Because and I'm tired of women get lost in that. Yeah. 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 Submissive really comes with you trusting God and taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. That's being submissive. And making a decision on who can and be responsible your enough Absolutely. for you to submit to. Right. And that's a big decision that you have to get to take before you get married. Because so you, you have to say, you. am I going to be submissive to this person? Is he going to take care of me? And I and honestly, you asked my family, they, they didn't believe it. They was like, Nicole, submissive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when she got married, she was submissive. But 
I'm not right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, did you choose not to be submissive? When you, when not when I was married. When you, okay, so. Not when I was married. I'm just saying, when I, a lot of times, and this is just a lot of times. And when you get I married, seen, it's some issues. You, it's submissive. Yeah. I've been married, for, we've been married for nine years. We've been together for 11 years. And I found myself definitely submitting to him. I have found Oh, when I found out he was cheating, it's submissive. No. See, that's yes. the thing. That, <laughs> yeah. that was the last day. Absolutely. Me. But a lot of times we, we get our, okay, we live in this generation where we're the independent woman. So it's mm -hmm. even hard for us to wrap our minds around mm -hmm. saying, well, hey, we got to ask to get drapes and I work hard. You know, it is a hard thing to do as a woman, especially as an independent woman for us. To it do. is very hard, but for me, being a child of God since I was nine years old, I understood what it meant when it came to time. Yes. And honestly, my mother, everybody around me, even my children were like, she ain't going to do it. But when they saw him come in, and he was able to show me that he deserved it. Mm -hmm. I married him and I was completely submissive. Mm -hmm. Out of my character, out of my personality trait, I was completely submissive. Mm -hmm. so, so even when he was so in, in the wrong, uh -huh. I still just knew. Nicole, she said well, that's something. Yeah, because, about. yeah, Nicole, that's what I'm talking about. What she was just saying. You shouldn't be out of your personality right. or out of yourself when you're being submissive. It's a total opposite. Oh no, no, no. When you're being submit when you submit, it is not in my character to submit to anything. That's just the opposite of me. Okay. So to submit is what the Bible says. Yes. So that is out of my character. And yes, I had to come out of Nicole to do that. Okay. But it was I mean, I was I didn't bow down. I ain't bow down and nothing. I mean I I'm, I'm talking about simple things. Yes. Okay. I'm talking about he wanted me in by nine. It wasn't a rule. It was one of those okay. unspoken rules. He yeah. wanted me in by nine. Nicole was in at by eight fifty because mm -hmm. I knew I was not only submitting to you. I was submitting to God. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really all about you. It was about you know the commitment that I made and the vows that I made to the Lord. Okay. So. Nobody can see that happening. See, and I think a lot of time men don't realize that. A lot of time men think, especially sometimes in relationships when they take advantage of women that really take it serious right. about what it is, it's kind of like if you've made this three-way commitment, a lot of times we've committed to the man, but also, I don't know how men are, women commit also to the Lord. Yeah. So sometimes men get it confused and they think, yeah, because <laughs> I'm her husband. You know, yeah, she gonna do this, she gonna do that. And it really ain't about you Boom. just because you're my Boom. husband. Exactly. It ain't Boom. who you are, it's exactly. who I am exactly. and my relationship exactly. that I treat you this way. And so that's why when he started cheating, he thought I was still gonna be committing, but the Bible said, uh-uh, no. no, I don't gotta commit no more. No, that's, that's right. And that, yeah. That's why I was saying so. where you put when he breaks that. Right, yes. yeah. Yeah, that, that, that was that was my I got scriptures right here. Yeah. Saying, no, that's it, that's the end for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then now with the question being, is it obsolete? You yeah. have all these men who have not been raised and don't know how to be a husband, and you still get with them. You know, you still make that commitment with God, but they they go and do that. So it's is it obsolete? Yeah. You know, yeah. some men I think you know, to yeah. they take advantage. They take it's advantage. I think, I think it's obsolete to a certain degree. I think it depends on who you speak to. Yeah. I think you know. Again, I'm I'm gonna go with what my with what. My lifestyle. When you're saying obsolete, are you speaking of submissiveness or submissiveness? Marriage? No, okay. yes. submissiveness. submissiveness. Okay. Okay. And, so and going with what my lifestyle is, which is church on Sunday, whether I'm going out on Saturday or not. Come yes, on, I'm preach. Still you preach. Church on Saturday. You gotta get up on church on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. Yeah. So going with what I know, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna say that, and, and so my church life, and then outside, like say my my secular life. Let's just say that mm -hmm. some of my girls friends may say that oh I'm not submitting to nothing I, I pay my own bills I got my own this and my own that and feel as if submission is like a foreign right. language right. then I have other friends who like I want wholeheartedly just like myself I will I don't mind submitting I, it's, it's, to me 
It's pleasure and please. I want to. Right. It's but okay. I can't find him because he's <laughs> not available. He? He's coming. During this time. He is coming. <laughs> so I think depending on so where you're at you in your life <laughs> or <laughs> for some <laughs> people, yeah. submission can seem obsolete. Yeah. Or depending on who your circle is. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you have a circle of married friends mm -hmm. or you have a circle of friends who may have, who may seem a little bit um, loose. Go ahead. Not even <laughs> loose, but maybe just say damaged. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Damaged and hurt from past relationships yeah. or situations. <laughs> may feel like, like, you know what, damn, submission, yeah. I, I, I done been down that road. It yeah. ain't worked for me. I ain't yeah. trying, you know what I mean? I and, and I think that that could, I, I think that that could inhibit a person's idea sure. of whether they should submit or not. I think that mm -hmm. a lot of it is about how submission looked to you from a from a childhood perspective mm -hmm. yes. as yes. well as an adult perspective. Yes. If submission looks like I'm doing this but I am miserable, mm -hmm. then of course you don't want to do that. Right. You want to be happy. But if submission looks a little more like what your mom is being described as, yes. then it's like a pleasure in giving to your husband as well as pleasing God. Uh, I'm, I'm a Hebrew Israelite that goes to church on Saturday, on the Sabbath, but we follow the King James Version of the Bible. So it does tell you that you have to submit with two exceptions, and, which are your outs. If they get really crazy yeah. on you. I like that. Right. Exit. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Yeah. But in doing so, you have to be responsible to choose a man who is competent, capable, and willing consistently to be a man worthy of your submission. Yes. And too many of us have not taken the responsibility of saying, you know what? Boo, Spanky, and, and, Puku. and, and whoever. Name, name, name. And he may be named Brandon. Uh -oh. But whatever his name is, we have not taken the responsibility of saying, I gave up my role as a quote unquote wife when he was not auditioning to be my husband. <laughs> He was auditioning to be my freak of the week or my whatever it was. Mm. But submission is fine if you have the right partner. Exactly. I don't I think, think it's obsolete. The, the yes. Bible is never obsolete. I think we're all in the grants on that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if we can operate under, no, Brandon don't look too tight. Let me let Brandon roll over. Do you know Brandon? I know a couple of I'm Brandons. <laughs> But I'm just saying, if we do our jobs to do our own yes. homework and do what's in our own best interest, submission is a joy. Yeah, I agree. And I agree. I agree. I've been married nine years, and um, I'm learning to be more submissive as I go on this marriage journey. Um, but I'm learning that submission is very powerful. True. And that if you are submitting to your husband, you have a, a feminine quiet power mm -hmm. that's the energy is so miraculous. Like you You have a strength that they you have a strength that it. yeah, that that's a strength is, that it's just unbelievable. It. And your household is better for it, your husband is better for it. And you will find that he's gonna be coming to you for some of that feminine power. He's gonna need your energy for you know, you're his yin to his yang. But he needs that. So I think we have to know what submission is and how powerful our feminine submission is, our vulnerability, how powerful that is for our husbands. And when we understand that power, you you won't have a problem with submission right. at all. Well, it's please submit only to your husbands, please. <laughs> to <laughs> yours. Say that. Your husband. Yours. After you're married, yeah. not before. Not before. Because they get, a lot of men serve. out here have gotten it twisted. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah. just that. Our husband. Yeah, yours. Because yeah. there are some women that are submitting to these men. Yeah, yeah. without a ring, mm -hmm. with just a bird pen. So <laughs> I'm just saying. Sure. Welcome to the Mocha City Beauty Lounge and the Mocha City Cafe. You can find a full service salon, spa, and cafe right on the premises. I'm going to show you another one of our salon suites and our barber suite where you can get some fabulous services here. Again, this is a two station setup, so you have um, semi privates where you can have some awesome services. Um, any type of hairstyles that you can 
think of we could do here at the Mocha City Beauty Lounge. We have our barber uh, suite. You can come get your cut. You, your family, um, the guys can all come over and get the shaves here. The women can come over and enjoy services. We also uh, will round out this tour with our nail salon. We do uh, full service manicures, pedicures, all here at the Mocha City Beauty Lounge. So be sure to stop in when you get an opportunity. We're right here in Madison. I love the controversy.